Hi guys, um, some guy asked me on CG Talk actually how to do a kind of tornado setup uh, with animated spline. So I sat down and came up with this thing. So I thought it would be cool to show you. So you can see that this is a spline that I have animated uh, with X uh, link text forms actually. So I just have selected uh, words on the spline like this one, this one, this one, and I have animated it. So this is going to be kind of my tornado funnel. And then the TP setup, actually the goal is to have them create here and then, you know, just funnel them down to the base. So you can see it works quite nicely. Uh, so let's see how it works. It has uh, two main groups, uh, the guides and the body. So what the guides are is a bunch of particles that get placed on the spline. You can see here I have them as these tethers so I can see the orientation. So from these guys I'm gonna get the direction along the spline and for the first one of them I have this shape which is gonna give me the surface from which I'm gonna actually create my particles, like the base of the funnel. So that's really simple, I just create 100 particles, I position them on the spline, so I use the a relative input here which means that from 0 to 1 they are going to be placed on a, a relative position on the path like 0 being in the beginning 1 being at the end and to get 0 to 1 I just divide my particle ID because these are the first particles that I'm creating I divide them by 100 because they are 100 particles so I get the 0 to 1 sweep and I give it to the path position I give them a shape just to see the orientation here and I position them. So what I do it is, is simply that I just reposition them all the time. So I don't really use uh, some surface uh, following or anything. It is just uh, positioning all the time. I can even actually turn that off. Okay, so now it is just a display. And the alignment of these guys is important because I need them to actually point down the line, which uh, is actually th this alignment I'm going to use to later give the particles velocity down the line. Okay, so let's see how this works. Ah, uh, but first, yeah, I use P selection to select the first particle here, send it to uh, the start, the guide start group, and this start uh, group I assign a shape to, which is the cylinder, so I can then. Uh, create the body particles from this so I create them from the start group on its surface and then I have three types of uh, velocities on it so the first one let's just remove them uh, so the first one is just the velocity along the line so you see how this works so what this is is simply getting the uh, the closest to the body particle of the line group so I have in PPAS AB the body and the guides so I get the you see only the, uh, the nearest particle in a certain radius uh, from the body particle and I get the alignment of this particle which gives me you know this direction which direction is along the line get the Z axis and then give velocity in this direction so this is the velocity along the line then the next one is the orbital velocity so if I just play this uh, actually it only modifies the direction so I'll need some speed so what this is doing is that it is um, orbiting the particles along uh, around the line you see it is creating this twisting motion so the way this works is that I get, um, again, the closest particle on the line from the current body particle and I get its alignment again, so the direction and I get the distance between the particle and the line. So that here the vector cross product um, comes in. So what the vector cross product is allowing you to do is that it, if you give it two vectors, it is giving you the uh, a vector which is uh, perpendicular to both which means that if I give it this vector 
the distance, let's say this is my particle, if I give it the vector between it is its position and the vector down the line, it is going to give me a vector which is perpendicular to both, which in this case is the tangent to this circle. If you have a circle which is uh, centered here on the line and it is it's going through the this point, a tangent to this circle is going to be this uh, vector cross product. This is something really useful that you can use a lot. So this is going to give me the direction in which I need to modify my um, velocity in order to get this uh, funnel motion. So you see here this velocity then uses this the vector cross product for the direction and I only modify direction here. actually is a bit odd because it should be speed and direction because there should be so I can modify yeah so I can modify the orbital speed yes so and you have to just notice that I have it in added here mm, so I can get I can add to the velocity along the line I can add the uh, the funnel motion so you can see here I have a nice nice funnel and obviously I delete the particles when they get to the, to the certain height on Z. It is just I get their, their position, their height, and when it gets lower than something, then I just delete them. But you see, there is a, I can get some nice funnel shape going on. So now the last piece of the puzzle is the suction force, which is, if I turn off the orbital, you can see it is just sucking the particles in Again, I use the guide particles and uh, I get the nearest guide to the body and I just add some velocity, uh, which is just uh, sucking it in. Uh, so from the, from the current body particle, it gets sucked into the, um, the nearest guide particle. So you see that I f it, they form this kind, of a, this kind of a funnel. So when I add everything on top, what happens is something like this. So obviously, you can tweak this a lot. So you can get like more suction, um, less orbital force, you know, all the tweaking that you want to do. So this is, you see, kind of a tight funnel. So yeah, that's the setup that you could do. It is a nice showcase of actually doing um, several stages of uh, velocities just adding up. You can also do it with forces actually, but just in this case, it's velocities. Cool, see you next time.